When it comes to our health, we're always telling you what's new, new research, new technology, new treatments. But maybe the key to a healthier future is taking a fresh look at the past. Dr. Kim joins us with more. Kim? Well, Liz, we're talking about prehistoric times when our ancestors were hunters and gatherers. Despite all the amazing achievements of modern science and high technology for good health, we may want to take a step backward in time. Two years ago, 37-year-old Tara Grant weighed 250 pounds and had a host of medical problems. I was depressed. I was miserable. But not for long. Here's Tara today. I have never felt this good in my life. I weigh less than I did in high school. I had polycystic ovarian syndrome. Gone. I had endometriosis. Gone. <laughs> you want some beef jerky? So what happened? Tara says she took a giant step backward in time and started eating, exercising, even socializing like a caveman. It just made so much sense to me. It's like uh, I had a light bulb moment. Now, before you say Tara's nuts, consider this. At UCLA, home of the Bruins, hundreds of researchers recently took the same walk on the wild side. I just take a sharp knife, cut that part off, and eat the, the red stuff underneath. At a sold-out symposium, scientists, medical doctors, Doctors and nutritionists from around the world gathered to discuss how living like a caveman could benefit human health, even cure chronic disease. It produces dramatic results in terms of health. People feel better on it. The movement is called ancestral health or the paleo movement. The idea that the human gene pool, our DNA, has changed little since the late Paleolithic era. That means our bodies are better suited for prehistoric, not modern, times. We're basically hunter-gatherers living in the 21st century with all this technology, and our genes don't know what to make of it. Experts say this mismatch could explain why humans living today suffer from so many complex degenerative disorders, including... Heart disease, stroke, uh, type 2 diabetes, which is the most common form of diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, osteoporosis. As to whether this interest in paleo health will pass, Tara thinks not. I can't see hundreds of thousands of years of, of evolution uh, just being a fad. Now over the next few nights at 5 o'clock, I'm going to tell you more about this ancestral health movement and how I decided to give it a try and what I found out. Oh, so. Fascinating. Now, how is this movement more than just a diet, though? You know, Liz, I think of a diet as temporary. It's what we do often to just lose weight. But what we're talking about here is a lifestyle change. What can you change? Change what you eat. Change how you live for better health. And, you know, it's about socializing. It's about how you move, how you exercise. There's a lot to it. Yeah. Stay tuned. It's a whole lifestyle change yes. that you need to be making. One of the first steps to good health is to actually take a giant step backward in time. Tonight, Dr. Kim continues her series, Live Like a Caveman or Woman. Kim? Well, Alan, that giant set backward is all the way back to the Stone Age. For that, I needed a world-class guide, and I found one in Berkeley. So if you're faced with a very large mammal carcass like this portion of a giraffe... It's not often you run into a guy with part of a giraffe leg. The best thing going in the Stone Age is to make a stone tool with a sharp edge, like this big cleaver. Meet Dr. Tim White, the Indiana Jones of UC Berkeley. The paleoanthropologist has traveled to the remote corners of Africa, digging up clues about how we lived millions of years ago. This was a Stone Age man. Dr. White says for almost all of our existence on Earth, we've been hunters and gatherers. Our biology is still basically the same biology that we had as hunters and gatherers 100,000 years ago in Africa. All that activity kept our ancestors active, muscular, and fit. They ate lots of lean, wild animals and plants. Today, our food is highly processed and easily accessible. You don't have to pound it. We don't have to cut it. We don't have to break into the bones. We just consume it. And there's very little energy that goes into that consumption. Today, we eat less protein, fiber, and potassium, more saturated fat, carbs, salt, and sugar. And we don't burn it off. And we're paying an enormous health cost for that. Obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer. Would returning to the Stone Age diet improve our health? Dr. White could not say, but the scientists at UCSF have an idea. 
it really does work. Dr. Linda Frasetto and her team tested a modern day version of the paleo diet on out of shape volunteers. They ate lots of lean meat, fish, fruits, vegetables, and healthy fats. And without losing any weight or exercising. Everybody's blood pressure went down. In two weeks, everybody's cholesterol and triglyceride levels um, got better. And the average drop on this was 30 points. That's the kind of drop you get by taking statins for six months. And there's more. People who go on the Paleolithic diet can cure their diabetes in two weeks. Dramatic results in short order. This I gotta try. That's right, I was so impressed with the research findings that I decided to go paleo. Tomorrow at 5, my personal experience with the diet and why I was told I should think about staying on it for life. Not a fad. Not a fad. A life changer. No, no, no. Life changer. Absolutely right. We'll look forward to that. Thanks, Kim. Emerging research shows there may be great health benefits to eating more like our prehistoric relatives. To find out, Dr. Kim Mulvihill put the paleo diet to the test and she has some results for us. Kim? Hey, Alan. The idea is simple. Eat like a caveman for two weeks and see if it makes me healthier. But to make sure it was really just the food that made the difference, I was not allowed to lose any weight. So I had to eat a lot, six times a day. In the name of science. Hi. How are you today? Yes. I gave vial after vial of blood. I'm fasting for this. As well as days and days of urine. I'm a modern day guinea pig in a prehistoric experiment. Pork tenderloin instead of turkey vegetable meatloaf. I'm going to eat like a caveman for 10 days. Oh, prune juice, I didn't have that. I'm gonna try your blood. Okay. And scientists at UCSF are going to compare my blood and urine pre and post diet for any changes in my cholesterol, blood sugar, insulin levels, as well as blood pressure. I had to eat a lot of food without losing any weight. On my shopping list? Yeah. Thank you. Lean cuts of meat and poultry, fish, fruits, vegetables, nuts, no dairy, no grains, no beans, and none of this. Yum. I'm just here to drool. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> At home, a lot of washing and slicing. Two-thirds of an ounce. And weighing. I'm ready to go to work. And eating, lots of eating. Daily, I tracked my weight and blood pressure. Oh, that is so high. See what coffee and a little bit of stress does for you? Then, more blood and urine tests. The results striking after just 10 days. Oh, why? Look at the cholesterol. Yeah. That's wild. My total cholesterol had plummeted, 221 to 170. As for my blood pressure? Your blood pressure is sensitive to the effects of salt. Cutting out processed foods meant a lot less salt, and that lowered my blood pressure. All the plants I ate were packed with potassium, good for my heart, and fiber, and low in acid, meaning I didn't need a lot of dietary calcium. What's more, pre-paleo, I was pre-diabetic. Despite normal blood sugars, there was evidence of insulin resistance. You were, in fact, insulin resistant, and after 10 days, you went to borderline. So, yeah, so actually, everything improved. Yep, I'm better off eating like a caveman. Bottom line, Dr. Frasetto says, I, this is a diet that I should consider mm. staying on for the rest of my life. However, eating all that food, six meals a day, was daunting. Tomorrow, I'll tell you what happens when I eat paleo to lose weight. Pre-diabetic, so. the salt thing, you didn't know. No, I you, didn't know. Now you do. I was shocked. So simple, but. a caveman can do it. <laughs> That's what we should <laughs> be telling right. it as, right? It is a lot of work, and it's a heck of a lot of food. And but you're a lot healthier. Oh, yeah. All right. Thanks, Kim. Liz? Tonight, Dr. Kim continues her week-long series, Live Like a Caveman. Last night, we heard about her two weeks as a study subject. Tonight, we see how she does it on her own. Kim, how'd it do? Well, Liz, eating like my cave-dwelling ancestors, lean meats, plants, and healthy fats, produced dramatic results in short order. However, now I wanted to lose some weight, and I wanted to see how that would work with paleo. And would I be as healthy? I shopped. I chopped. Look wow. at this amazing drop. And I dropped cholesterol, blood pressure, even blood sugar, without any dramatic weight loss. But I just had to ask. So what if I combine the two? Mm -hmm. Weight loss with this diet. 
Do you think these would I fall would even expect further? them to get even better. So I continued to eat lean meats, fish, plants, eggs, nuts, and seeds. No dairy, no grains, no supplements. But this time I ate less. Seven weeks later, more tests, and wow. My body is happier You're, still. Right. You are healthier. My blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugar improved even more. I was no longer pre-diabetic, and this time I lost weight. Today, I'm 30 pounds lighter. I would say I've never felt better. I've been with this from the, the get-go. The insulin response on cheese is... Scientist Dr. Lauren Cordain is one of the godfathers of the modern paleo movement. He's stuck with the plan for nearly a quarter century. I think it's the way it makes you feel. You feel better. Dr. Cordain says the ancient DNA that runs our bodies is designed to work best when fueled with real, unrefined, unprocessed foods. And that while our modern diet may save us time, effort, and money, it's making us sick. I like the idea. You UCSF endocrinologist Dr. Robert Lustig agrees. The bottom line is, we're killing ourselves. Dr. Lustig says 75% of healthcare expenditures go to manage chronic diseases like cancer, diabetes, and heart disease that are prevalent in affluent societies and linked to bad diets. But he says not everyone can afford to go paleo. We have 66 million obese adults and 20 million obese kids in this country. They are not going to all go on a Paleolithic diet. So he says, don't go back to the cave, just go back to the basics. Low sugar, high fiber, and you've got it nailed. That's something you can do, but it's called eat real food. Now, paleo has been great for me, but it's not for everyone. I think the real challenge is to stay away from processed food. That's often loaded with sugar, salt, and unhealthy fats, and missing all that wonderful fiber. Now, tomorrow at 5, how it's not just what you eat, but how you live, including exercise. Tomorrow at 5. Now, can you be a vegetarian and go paleo? No, that's one thing. Okay. You can't be vegetarian on this diet. So much of it is from meat and fish and fowl that you just can't get enough. And also beans, legumes, those are off limits okay. so but I do know a lot of vegetarians who have made a switch they're making adjustments because they want to try paleo so, so just cut out the, the the processed food and that's start your... with cutting out processed foods Great. that would be my first recommendation yeah awesome Kim you look fabulous thank you